Thank you, Taylor. I'm mm -hmm. gonna call the meeting to order and we're gonna start with roll call. Taylor, if you would. And remember everyone that you need to state where you're uh, participating from, where you're physically located. All right, Juliet Ballard. Yes, um, Dexter, Michigan. Marta Larson. I'm present, I'm participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Gress. Present, calling from Milan, Michigan. Uh, Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Elizabeth Thompson. Present, calling in from Ypsilanti Township. Jennifer Green. Phyllis Herzig. Present, calling in from Ann Arbor. Jennifer Heckendorn. Present, calling in from Detroit this morning. Brenda McKinney. Present, from Superior Township, Michigan. Jasmine Cooper. Present, calling from Los Angeles, California. Ooh. Annie Somerville. We do have a quorum. Okay, great. Um, the first order of business is to Omri. Oh, you had a. You're muted. Tina needs to be promoted and to the panelist. Oh, yes. Thank you for noticing that. Mm -hmm. I think we've got Dina with us now. Good. Okay, great. Um, thank you, uh, Marie, for noticing that. Um, the next order of business is to introduce our newest member of the Commission on Aging, and that's Jasmine Cooper. Uh, Jasmine is a uh, member at large. And uh, Jasmine, if you would introduce yourself and give us a couple sentences about who you are, and then each one of us will introduce ourselves to you. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Jasmine Cooper. I'm a third year PhD candidate at the University of Michigan studying psychology. Um, and so I specifically study cognitive outcomes of older adults um, based on like environmental and health related factors. Great. I'm going to start with the, in, in the order of the pictures I see on the screen. So we'll start next with Marie. Hi, my name is Marie Gress. Um, I'm a social worker uh, practicing management consulting and currently the interim executive director at the WAVE out in, in Chelsea, Dexter. Great, thanks. I'm Marta Larson. I'm a semi-retired educational consultant focusing on um, equity in education um, and representing the community of Northfield Township and Whitmore Lake. Uh, Juliet. Hi, my name is Juliet Ballard and I am the owner of JYB Home Care. I also completed my postdoc at U of M. Um, I have a dual doctorate in education and one in psychology and I'm here to try to help aging adults. Thank you, Brenda. Um, hello, Jasmine. My name is Brenda McKinney. I'm a retired um, elected official. I was Superior Township Treasurer for 25 and a half years, and I'm a member at large. All right, thank you, uh, Taylor. Hello, I am Taylor Clark with the Area Agency on Aging. I do planning and grants, but I have been requested as a administrative assistant to this COA. Great, thank you. Jennifer Heckendorn. Hi, <clears throat> Jasmine. My name is Jennifer. I represent the uh, District 9 in Ann Arbor. I'm a lecturer at the School of Social Work at the University of Michigan. I have a private practice in Ann Arbor, um, working primarily with older adults. Excellent, Margaret. I think you're muted, Margaret. Yeah, okay. Hi, Jasmine. Um, my name's Margie Reynolds. Uh, I'm a retired nurse. Uh, I um, worked uh, at Pr Trinity Health for many years. I was on the Glacier Hills board of directors for about 10 years, and that's where I developed my interest in older adults. 
I still do some uh, volunteer work for uh, Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation. Um, and um, I represent, you're going to have to help me, Marta, what, what I never can remember what district I represent. But well, I, I can't remember either, but you're um, one of <laughs> I, I live, I live in uh, Pittsville Township. Thank I you, believe Mar Margie is an at-large, unless it changed this last. District four. It, it did District change. Four. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's District four. Okay. Great. Thank District you. District what, Marta? Four. Four. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next is Phyllis. Hi, I'm uh, Phyllis Herzig. I'm a retired geriatric social worker, um, and I represent District 7 of Ann Arbor. Great, thank you. Elizabeth? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Thompson. I'm a retired uh, State of Michigan administrator. I worked as the program director for the Michigan Women's Commission and served as the ex officio member for the State of Michigan Advisory Council on Aging. And I have continued in my retirement to serve as the representative that from uh, Area Agency on Aging 1B. Um, I also teach a diabetes prevention program class for the Kidney Foundation and have a small uh, private practice as a coach for people who are entering into retirement. Excellent. Mm. Annie. Um, hi, Jasmine. My name is Annie. I'm the County Commissioner Representative for the Commission on Aging. And I represent District 6, which is the city of Richland, parts of the Ipsy and Superior Township. Um, and in my other full time job, I work in state government. Great. And Dina, while not officially a member of the Commission on Aging, represents the uh, Help the Aging Collaborative and sits with us. So, Dina, would you introduce yourself? Hi. Yes, I'm with um, the Washington Health Initiatives of Healthy Aging Collaborative, and I work for the Center for Health and Research Transformation, or otherwise called CHART. Great. Thanks, everybody. I don't think I missed anybody. If I missed you, raise your hand. I don't think I did. Great. Um, I've suggested to Jasmine that she consider reaching out to each of us individually to get to know us a little bit better, but this is a good start. So she has some idea of who she's talking to. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is um, public participation. If there's any member um, of the audience who would like to uh, offer any comments to the Commission on Aging, this is your turn. Uh, please raise your hand and I'll call on you individually. I see no hands raised, um, so I'll take that as no one member of the public wishes to address the Commission on Aging at this time. So that means we can dispense with the Commission response to public participation. Um, at this time, it's time to uh, approve the minutes. Um, I think that, let's see, who's who is gonna talk about minutes here? I, someone, I think it was Marie had some suggestions for changes to the minutes. Uh, yeah, I mentioned a group called CAPDART, and so I emailed you, Taylor, um, the correct acronym for that. Uh, and then whenever the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is abbreviated, it's A-A-A-C-F, not just the two A's. Okay, Thank so you. did you have a motion, Marie? Uh, yeah, I'll motion to approve the minutes with the edits. Support. Was that Brenda? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody have any discussion before we vote? Okay. Um, Taylor, would you call the roll? Juliet Ballard. Yes. Marta Larson. Yes. Marie Gress. Yes. Margie Reynolds. Margie? 
You're going to need to unmute yourself. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to abstain because I wasn't present last month. Okay. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Jennifer Green? Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Abstain. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Annie Summerwell? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. I should mention that I did vote on this because I did watch the entire uh, tape of the meeting. So I feel like I was almost here, even though I wasn't present actually. Um, next item on the agenda is discussion items. And we have a presentation from Dina Smith uh, representing the Healthy Aging Collaborative. And she's going to be talking about transportation. So if uh, Dina, if you'd like to get started, uh, would you prefer to have questions during your presentation or when you're finished? Yeah, I think when I'm finished would be great. Okay, so when Dina's finished, then um, I'll ask her to call on people as they raise their hand with questions so that we don't end up with two people asking questions at the same time. Um, so Dina, take it away. Okay, bear with me a second. It always takes me about three tries to get my screen sharing the right way. So one second. Okay. Yep, see, I already tried once and so now I'm on try number two. All right, here we go. All right, so I am going to attempt to see, are you seeing my note screen or are you seeing the slides? We're seeing we the notes. That. Notes, okay. How is that? That's better. Okay, perfect. All right, so, um, <clears throat> well, I've already introduced myself, so um, I will just go right into the, the presentation. Uh, this presentation is a summary of the Transportation Summit report that we recently published, and it was a culmination of work commissioned by the Healthy Aging Collaborative uh, and funded by the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation. The Healthy Aging Collaborative is a working group of the Washtenaw Health Initiative, also referred to as WHI. And in my role at CHART, I oversee the WHI and provide the strategic direction for the collaborative. The Healthy Aging Collaborative identified transportation as a significant concern for older adults. Uh, last year, we secured the use of a consultant, Sue Ann Savas, a professor at the University of Michigan School of Social Work, to help us further explore the barriers in order to begin to identify potential solutions. We conducted a landscape review that including examining publicly available transportation reports, interviewing stakeholders such as transportation providers and seniors, developing an inventory of the local options, and conducting a secret shopper study uh, where we had students try to set up rides for seniors, like using various stories. Like I, I work, I'm a social worker and I work with a senior or I have a uh, a grandparent that needs a ride, just, you know, kind of going through different scenarios as if they actually needed um, that ride. So here's what we learned. Not all providers could accommodate wheelchairs or walkers. Uh, most providers offered door to door services, but very few offered door through door services, which helps mobility challenged seniors get from their house into the vehicle with assistance. Also, uh, the flow of transportation funding in the county was very difficult to, to pinpoint, but yet anecdotally, we know that um, many transportation providers you know, struggle with the, the current resources to run their services. Through our research, we were able to identify the types of seniors who are more likely to have their transportation needs met, 
such as those living in cities or on a public bus route, those that have support networks that can help them. They have and know how to use a smartphone to access apps or other web-based services. And then those that are less likely to access transportation live in rural communities, are typically low income, and then individuals that face the greatest transportation barriers are often those with high burdens associated with chronic health conditions. We believe an ideal transportation system is within reach. Some of the elements that are needed to ensure accessibility are multiple modes of transportation and options for personalized travel assistance that support differing mobilities, affordable transportation, and multiple ways to arrange for a ride, especially non-tech options, as well as eliminating transit deserts, such as in our rural communities. Our summit was hosted this past March and included an impressive turnout of elected officials, senior centers, and other reps from senior serving agencies, several members of this commission, healthcare providers, and transportation providers. Sue Ann Sabas provided an overview of her research and analysis, and we also had three expert speakers. So I'll take a few minutes to give a few highlights from each expert. First, we had a Matt Carpenter from the Ann Arbor Area Transit Authority, also known as the RIDE. He shared transportation services that are available to seniors in the communities of Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti Township. Uh, these services include fixed route buses with a program called Gold Ride that provides free transportation to those 65 and up, weekly grocery services to take seniors to and from Meyer. He also highlighted a few improvements they intend to make with the funding from the recently passed transportation millage, but he did emphasize that these improvements can only be applied to the area under his authority, which again is Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, I'm sorry, Ypsilanti, Ypsilanti Township. Kate Schramm from Phoenix Mobility Rising um, was a presenter. Phoenix is a national nonprofit organization that operates a transportation assistance service in our county, but has a larger presence in other communities across the country. Some of their successful programs uh, in, you know, in other um, communities include a transportation assistance hub that is designed to use transportation solutions to address social determinants of health across all communities urban and rural, uh, mobility as a service or MAS as a one-stop process to find, book, and pay for rides through both internet-based options and a regular old phone number. And then lastly, we had Janet Gessler from MDOT, and she discussed uh, their role as providing assistance and oversight to over 135 public transit service providers. She discussed the various funding streams that come from the federal government through her department and down to the local communities, which is nothing short of a complicated web. And she outlined several solutions that communities could employ with a few of those being developed as statewide initiatives. Following the summit, we drafted a list of potential solutions that were outlined in the reports that I mentioned earlier. And these include uh, conducting a feasibility study to explore changes to the current transportation authority. As I mentioned, you know, the, our, the current Ann Arbor Area Transit Authority um, just covers like the major cities. So that leaves out a lot of the outlying communities. Uh, another recommendation just to establish a more effective working relationship with the Regional Transit Authority work with MDOT to analyze mobility manager funding and consider redirecting those funds to perhaps hire one mobility manager for the county. Request from MDOT and or consider working with an accountant or someone to map the flow of transportation funding, increase the transparency of the 130 transportation funding sources and public funding formulas mentioned in the summit to increase resources to support the current needs and emerging innovations 
including access to new vehicles and operating funding. Find alternatives for seniors with limited access to technology and consult with Phoenix Mobility Rising or other similar organizations to develop the specifications and cost for a centralized coordinated transportation hub. As a wrap up, let me share some next steps. Our role at WHI is, is not an implementer of solutions. You know, we, we are, you know, a convener, an organizer, you know, we, we dig into the, the research and information that's available and, and present it to those who can make um, decisions. So we are in the process of actively seeking a champion that can implement solutions. Some of the work of a champion could be identifying feasible solutions and finding the funding to execute those solutions. Work with oops, sorry, 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 whoops. Work with decision makers to make an equitable uh, transportation system a priority for the county. Ensure the voice of the the community and community citizens is represented. Some follow-up that we have taken since the summit is to have strategic conversations with, Phil, with Phoenix Mobility Rising and the role that they may might be able to play as a champion. Um, just um, in the last few months, we have supported Phoenix in developing two funding proposals, one to the county and one to a foundation to implement their transportation assistance hub. One notable result from the secret shopper experiment is that of all the calls made to request a ride, not one provider was able to help assist find another transportation option if their service could not meet the needs of the caller. And the model that Phoenix has can do this. Also under my role at WHI, we have applied for funding to develop a policy brief and recommendations on improving non-emergency medical transportation services. Uh, which includes taking a deeper dive into the challenges accessing health insurance benefits that already exist for this. Lastly, I just want to give uh, a last shout out to the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation for supporting this work and to Sue Ann Savas, who was integral into the analysis, the summit, and the report. I'm, I'm happy to share my slides after today's meeting um, and my contact info is, is here if you would um, like to follow up. Uh, I'll also, I, I can send, I don't think there's a chat function. I was gonna put in the link to the, to the full report which has gone around um, already, but happy to uh, at least um, include that with the slides as well. And I'll send that to Marta or, and we can also if there is a chat function, we can post that. So I will I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that if there are questions, um, we can uh, talk without the slides on. Okay, I'm gonna just say um, thank you, Dana, and um, please send your slides to Taylor along with the link and she will make sure it gets in the uh, minutes for the meeting, the link that is, and also, um, She'll make sure that everybody on the Commission on Aging gets a copy of your slides. So is there yeah. anyone have any questions for Dina? And I'll let Dina call on people one at a time <clears throat> or conversation for that matter. Elizabeth, I see your hand up. Yeah. Um, could you uh, expand a little more on what a transit assistance hub is and could do? Yes. Um, hold on. Let me... I have to get out of my slides, otherwise I lost you for a second. So um, the idea behind the transportation assistance hub is that there would be uh, a place that uh, an older adult or a caregiver or even a medical pro provider could access transportation options through this hub. So they could use an app or they could call a phone number and say, you know, I need to go to, you know, Michigan Medicine for a specialty appointment and I need help getting a ride. So the hub is intended to, you know, match that person with the right kind of transportation. So if it's, if it's something that they could take a bus to, or if it's something that they need that door through door service, you know, 
Phoenix is able to connect them and, and actually book that ride for them with the community transportation providers. Another um, element of the hub is the mobility manager role. A mobility manager role is intended to kind of serve a dual purpose. One is to uh, is, is to find the right transportation service for that person, um, but also to um, help provide resources if they have other needs, like maybe they have um, like food insecurity and they need, um, they need resources on where they can get food pantry, or maybe they need meals on wheels. So that the hub is intended to be able to provide resources uh, referrals and connection to other community-based organizations to be able to address those needs. How is that different from the uh, existing um, services that the Air Agency on Aging provides? I think AATA has some ability to outreach. Um, my ride too, that's what it's I was just looking up to see what it was called, the Area Agency on Aging Service. So the the um, Phoenix would be working with all of those providers. So think of, of of Phoenix like this is like a centralized hub. So it it can it can develop as a sort of one stop place. So you don't have to call or find multiple organizations. Um, so they're working with with you know, um, Ann Arbor area, I'm sorry, with the um, area agency on aging. Uh, in theory, they can work with uh, my ride. You know, some of those details would still have to be uh, worked out because it's not currently functioning in that capacity right now. And that's why they need funding to be able to do that. Uh, but the really the main point is that it's meant to be a much simpler process for an older adult to get their transportation and other needs met. So they they would be working with all of those local partners uh, to be able to uh, connect to the current you know, available resources. Thank you. Could I share my screen really quick and show you what Phoenix has been doing the last few years, just to give you a sense of what some of it looks like. And then I can add on to a couple of things that Dina has been sharing. Um, I'm gonna do this screen. So uh, Phoenix came to Washtenaw County like right before the pandemic. And they uh, they were funded by AARP, and either so people could either book a ride in Washtenaw County or take a training related to how to access transportation. Um, and from what I know of AAA One B's uh, service, they are um, they do the training for sure. Um, and they're able to help people find rides like between the counties and able to give phone numbers to uh, agencies who provide transportation in that area so they can help them find the ride, but they can't necessarily help actually book that ride the way that um, Phoenix is trying to make it so individuals and service providers can help actually book the ride that they need instead of, you know, doing phone tag. Um, they have an online booking platform. They have a call center. Um, and then they also have um, smartphone apps. And I'm not going to show you all of those right now. Just these are the options that they currently offer. And from um, the the demos that I've seen and some of the, the setup that's being finalized right now on the back end, this is all getting like a major overhaul and boost from what already exists. Um, and the nice thing with something, with using a centralized service like Phoenix is all the transportation providers are sharing their information in one place. So an individual only has to look in one place to see that I need to ride JFS's transportation um, for this piece, and then I'll have to get you know the wave for this other piece. Um, or 
actually there's this other service that will just take me the entire way and they can compare fares on their own instead of you know jumping around between the different services and all of it's just in one much more convenient place to make things easier for the user um phoenix also up until this uh and this whole time phoenix has been giving the fares to the agencies any fares they collect because they can collect that from people as they book they've been giving a hundred percent of the fares back to the agencies so they're not trying to take anything away from any of the agencies that they're working with they're still supporting them um, and the work that they're doing so that's just a, a quick overview that i wanted i wanted to share and there's definitely there's definitely more in the pipeline. Um, it's it's very exciting. Thank you, Marie, for adding that on. Mm -hmm. uh, Margie? Yeah, um, so what is the status of Phoenix right now in in terms of Washtenaw County? Are they, are they here for good? Um, are we trying them out? What, what exactly is, is the no they have a permanent um, office here in in the um community and in staff like local staff so they're you know what marie showed you is the the um the ride at 50 plus which is which is really it's a limited program because they you know only had you know a certain amount of funding from aarp and i think toyota maybe for that um uh, but you know what they've been doing in Washtenaw County is a small version of what their capability is. You know, across the country, they have their transportation, and I think even in other communities in Michigan, they have a, a very uh, effective transportation assistance hub that that are running in other communities. So what what we have, you know, right now is a limited version of that. Um, but but yes, they are. Uh, they're here to stay and and are are very and in, interested in expanding their service. Uh, as I mentioned, they're already you know doing things in other communities in Michigan. So while they are a national organization, they do have um, like a local. They have a local presence. They have a local office, local staff, and the part that's really important about that is that when you talk about the mobility manager and some of the resources that they need to be familiar with you're not talking to uh, like a national call center. You're talking to somebody that knows the community. So so um, how how will the expansion take place? I mean, do, does Washtenaw County commit to them? Do, do, do the organizations share a piece of their, I think you talked about right now, they're giving all the money back to the organizations. How how do we support them? I mean, is it it's funding, and they they have um, applied for um, the county ARPA funding from the the proposal that was out this summer. So uh, that that's what they need. They need funding to be able to expand this to fully function as that transportation assistance hub. And so Washtenaw County would be the funder for that. Um, I mean, it, that's they got they were they requested funding to launch it from with county funding but um i don't know if i can answer exactly what their their business strategy is but um you know there are there are multiple other ways that that they can fund the the services you know there is you know um there's the like the federal funding that comes you know through mdot there's you know possibility to access funding that way so they're actually very um savvy about funding streams so I, I don't want to say too much more because I probably will just start making things up. <laughs> Marie, did you know more about that? <laughs> yeah, they use a lot of uh, state and federal funds. Um, and because they have a national presence, they're especially attuned into federal opportunities. Um, they may use something like the, the Washtenaw County ARPA funds to get launched in a specific community, but they have other structures in place to help with that ongoing sustainability so they're here to stay yes okay well that's nice yes <laughs> uh phyllis did you have your hand up i it's i don't see one but 
Yeah, I, I was wondering about the um, the funding. Well, how? But but you've just answered that, and uh, it it they sound perfect for what we need. And is there a question out there, or does somebody have to decide that this is the answer? It sure makes great sense. I um, I would toss that to Annie. I, I you know somebody at her in her level is going to be making decisions on um, how to spend those ARPA funding. So I, you know, I feel like that this is a great use of that funds, you know, to, as Marie said, to get them launched and get them in a position where they can, you know, then start accessing those, those um, other federal funds. And in the meantime, so we're, the first we're providing be... services. So the first step would would be probably the ARPA funds to launch it here more definitively, and then they would proceed with uh, the streams that they know about. Correct. Sounds good. Yes. I see that. I see that Brenda has her hand up. Also, uh, Dina. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. So, Dina, would that work sort of like the county 211? Like you call 211 and that's the one stop and they can refer you to any resources that you might need? So would it yes, work like in, that? Yes, in theory, it would, it would work like that. Um, you know, think of it like a front door. So somebody's coming into the front door because they need transportation services, but um, you know, their model is to to ask questions about other needs that they may, they might have. And so as they as they learn about that individual's other needs, you know, then they can provide um, resources, you know, to be able to address those those other needs, much like 211 can or um, AAA 1B could as as well. And I would I would say that it's a step it goes a step further than two one one because two one one and even how AAA one B's transportation assistance program is set up is that they give you a phone number to call somebody else and it's it's a really good lead it's probably the right one but Phoenix Mobility can actually take it a step further and go ahead and book that ride for you because they have things integrated. So if someone were to call them. In Washtenaw County, could they get service from them now? Yes. Yeah, they're running that um, ride at 55 uh, plus program. So uh, I don't believe that they have like the full like mobility manager function right now, mm -hmm. uh, but they, they could um, use that service. Uh, and um, part of what their expansion, I believe, will include is working with more providers than maybe they are right now. So I think they're working with a limited number of providers, um, but with an expanded model, they can um, they can better coordinate like the sort of the whole county's op options for rides. So if someone wanted to call them, do you have a number or something now? Um, yeah, there is a number. I don't know it, but we I can always um we can go back to that web page that Marie was showing and um we can include that in the minutes. Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll send the web page to Taylor. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Elizabeth, did you have another comment? I have a comment and a question. The comment is um hopefully that Phoenix's program will be um, more interactive with the providers, a problem people I have heard anecdotally uh, about the 211 issue is that often those lists that referrals are made to are outdated. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I think your point about having uh, the program functioning right in the community is very helpful too, because the understanding about geographical limits and um, where a place really is and how long it takes to get someplace else is, is I think unspoken sometimes when we talk about transportation, but that's key knowledge to have if you're going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope that Phoenix is, um, 
doing that um, constant dialogue with providers. Right. Uh, then a question which switches away a little bit. Um, when the State uh, Senior Advisory Council looked at transportation this issue a couple years ago, and it continues to come up, one of the biggest problems was transportation across surface districts. Mm -hmm. When you looked at it at a state level, it was across county lines. If you're looking within Washtenaw County, that is not as big an issue, but you still have different municipalities. You have different um, surface areas at different surface providers serve some areas, not others. And um, that certainly especially can be a barrier in terms of accessing our two major medical systems. Mm -hmm. Did the uh, summit discuss a little bit how to address some of those um, barriers that result from uh, transportation systems being linked to geographical areas and municipalities? We didn't really uh, dig into that extensively. I think it, it was part of when we did sort of an initial review of what are some of the challenges. You know, we know that uh, people come from outside of Washtenaw County, like even just on the border to Michigan Medicine and St. Joe's for their medical care. And, um, you know, and we understand that the challenge is that some of their providers, you know, only they stop at the border and then there's another provider that has to pick up. I do think that there are some um, of our local service providers that, you know, on a case by case basis have worked with other um, providers outside of the county. Uh, I think that's, you know, one of the areas that Phoenix can be very helpful in is, you know, they, I don't, I don't know exactly if, if they have any county line parameters. I don't think they would, but um they would be in a very good position to say, like, let's say somebody's coming from Livingston County, and I think they have the, the uh, their transportation service called Let's. So if they're coming from Livingston County, and maybe that, that their um, transportation provider can bring them to some some place in just inside Washtenaw County, and then another provider that uh, Phoenix can arrange will pick up, you know, almost like a transfer. Those are those are very viable solutions. Um, but what you need is you need a coordinator. An older adult, a caregiver, or even a, a healthcare provider could not manage that process. Like you need an, an expert coordinator to be able to do that. I don't see any other hands. Was, is there any other questions or comments? Oh, this is just great news. <laughs> yes, it's, it is very exciting. The rural, areas, the rural areas are really excited about this. Yeah. So talk to your commissioners. I don't, I don't know if those decisions are already being made, but um, you know, I think the ARPA funding is a real opportunity here. Elizabeth, did you have a question? Yeah, first of all, um, when we talk about ARPA funding, let us not forget that's a one-time funding source. And I believe the decision process is already to the point of the final decision-making. Annie will correct us if I'm wrong about that. So as we talk about this, I do think we think need to think about funding going forward about what a local or county contribution would be on an ongoing basis um, because um, that's part of ad our advocacy, I think. Also, since we have two kind of other experts here in the room, Marie is the interim director of WAVE and I know Marta, I believe is on the board of People Express. Do I have that correctly? Yes. I just like to hear if, Either of you have some comments about this or other transportation challenges you see from your expertise that maybe should be highlighted. I'll let Marty start and then I'll follow. Oh, okay. You go, I'll go first then. <laughs> <laughs> so um 
something that uh, some of us rural providers are wanting and and having more discussion around is the um, authority piece. Right now, we get pass-through money from AATA for um, and RTA for some services, um, and then we kind of just have to figure the rest out. Um, and these rural townships don't have a lot of spare monies to support the service that they really need. And in rural areas, of course, it's going to cost more. We are driving people further to get to the destinations they need. And we also have to drive all the way back with no one in the vehicle most of the time. Sometimes we can arrange that so we do have someone in there, but usually we can't. Um, and so we call that deadhead. And that's probably one of the most costly things to providing transportation in a rural area. Um, so any any options we have at making our systems more efficient, uh, we're looking at those also cost a lot more. I was doing a demo with Ecolane and Via, um, and there was another service, and they cost like 50000 a year. Um, and there's just not a lot of spare monies when we already have such expensive services to provide to, to low-income people in the rural areas. And so the talking more about what an authority would look like and what that means if we did it in in just the rural area where AATA is not is something that we are we are talking more about um, and looking at. Um, I'll also say that uh, I did some follow-up conversations with Sue Ann um, and her team about the secret shoppers that they did. Um, one of the secret shop, they only did one at Wave, um, which isn't a lot of data. And um, and they were asking about an area, a, a very rural area in the corner of our county, and there there is no other agency that would go out there to pick them up. And so when when we weren't able to find them another ride, there literally there was not there was not another ride. And so it wasn't that the agency couldn't do it in some cases; it's that there just isn't anything there. Um, and I think that is an important distinction when looking at how we need to be improving transportation, especially in the rural areas. I feel like there was something else money related I wanted to say. Oh, we were in discussions with um, MDOT on how they do reimbursement. A lot of reimbursement is just a flat amount across across the state. So um, whether that's per rider or per mile, and like I mentioned before, costs in rural areas is higher because of some of those deadheads, um, increased maintenance costs because of the increased mm -hmm. mileage and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's something more of a, a state issue than a, than a mm -hmm. county issue, but just something that affects transportation in our local area. Mm -hmm. um, Marta, what do you want to add to that? Well, I would add to the cost picture by saying that, um, at least in People's Express uh, experience, and we're uh, our headquarters is located in Whitmore Lake, um, we're also dealing with a large proportion of unpaved roads, which adds yeah. to maintenance issues for the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, one of the issues that we have with People's Express is just people don't know the resource exists. We had a public mm -hmm. meeting several years ago in which we were talking about uh, transportation issues and one guy got up and said what we need in this in this township is a bus service mm -hmm. and the guy sitting next to him was the director of people's express the mm -hmm. bus service in whitmore lake mm -hmm. uh, that this guy was from so and of course and they if i could quickly add to that um <clears throat> not only do people not know that the resource exists but they often think that it's only for older adults and people with disabilities when wave and people's express in particular do service rides for all ages all ability levels etc um back to you marta thank you um and i echo what marie says um so visibility is one of the issues that people's express is dealing with and we're working on uh you know being more um clear with the public about how they access people's express services the other thing is that we've been able to contract with some townships, uh, I would mention Northfield in particular, to subsidize the cost of rides for some of the adults in their community. 
um, which gets the cost down even further. I don't think People's Express is a very high expense uh, trip anyway, but getting the cost down to where it might be more affordable to someone with limited income is really helpful. We also work closely with mm -hmm. LETS, uh, the Transportation Agency in Livingston County, and we do do the transfers between LETS and People's Express. So they could be transported down to the county line, which Whitmore Lake is handily on the county line between Livingston and Washtenaw, and People's Express can pick them up maybe at the park and ride there on the north side of um, the county uh, at US 23, and I think it's eight mile. And uh, so we do a lot of that kind of work. We work very closely with LETS. We work closely with WAVE. Um, and so I think that the, the possibility that people could get services from whichever agency is the most appropriate for their needs and the most affordable for their situation um, and the most accessible for their needs in terms of whether they need door through door or whether they can get themselves out to the curb and just do curb to curb service. Um, all of those things are factors that um, need to be addressed. And I think having a centralized service that can address those issues would be really helpful. I just want to comment on something Marie mentioned. So <clears throat> the idea of these transit deserts, you know, where there is no transportation, you know, that goes there. Uh, I believe in other communities that Phoenix is in, they've established a pretty effective volunteer driver uh, program, which could address, you know, some of those, those um, issues. Uh, the other element of that is that, you know, there are, there are providers in the community that are willing to go anywhere, but the, the issue is that the, the, um, the cost is prohibitive and they don't want to turn that cost over to the, the rider. So, you know, really, you know, looking into funding and the federal funding, you know, that's coming in and how does that, how can that flow down to our local providers, you know, is a really, you know, important step that, that also, you know, needs to happen. Uh, Annie, did she roll off? Yeah. Yeah, okay. she'll, be, she'll probably be back <clears throat> once you get okay. somebody else and come back when she comes back in. Okay, um, Juliet, I, I saw your hand up next. Hi, I, I just had a question um, because there are so many different providers. I know there's a difference between the door-to-door -door and the service that you have to access by going to a bus stop. But like People's Express, The Wave, um, A-Ride, and... Um, the commuter bus that goes between Chelsea and Ann Arbor. Um, is it is there a way to tell which for an, any senior to look and say, you know what, this is appropriate one for me to call? Mm -hmm. um, because all of them are zooming everywhere, but it's really not clear unless I'm completely oblivious. As no, to and which... especially in, in your area, because you're in Dexter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the WAVES website is very outdated. And mm -hmm. so it makes it very difficult for you mm -hmm. to know that information. Um, and we are weeks away from launching an, a new website. Um, and one of the things more broadly that we're working on, and I've encouraged other agencies who offer transportation to do, is not only have a, a clearer um, user experience for yes. older adults when they get on the website, but also to have an embed of Phoenix Mobility's booking solution. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to the WAVE website thinking that like, oh, WAVE is the one in our area, and maybe they book with us, but maybe mm -hmm. they end up finding somebody else who actually can get them to where they need to go because we're too busy. Most of our declined rides, I would say, over 90% of our declined rides are people who need rides that day and we don't mm -hmm. have the availability. Um, and so uh, I think another answer to your question uh, would be um, Phoenix wants to be that person. Mm -hmm. You don't know who to call, call Phoenix and they're going to get you either the ride or the right person to talk to. Um you can also that call me though, because I know that you're in my area. So <laughs> that would be helpful. But the <laughs> deserts that you were talking about too are really concerning. It's for disabled people and seniors. And it's really mm -hmm. disheartening oh, to wow. know that there are people that desperately need to get to critical doctor's appointments, yep. desperately need to get through, um, have circumstances that they need transportation 
and just none exists in the rural communities. I know of one woman um, that is confined to her wheelchair and to be able to mobilize herself just around the house with her arms, she needs certain injections. And if she can't get transportation, she can't get there. So if there isn't a kind neighbor or something available, it's problematic. So I, I just, it would be very helpful if we could get more accessibility out here. I know other areas need accessibility, but for different reasons, we really need it. Yeah, I'm gonna follow up with you individually about about that because in your area, Chelsea Senior Center is covering rides for older mm -hmm. adults in Chelsea and Dexter. So this person you're talking about could get mm -hmm. a ride for free with Wave. I'll follow up with you individually. Okay, thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Thanks, Julia. And I would interject that I think both for Wave and People's Express, people are much more likely to get the ride they need if they call several days in advance and make an mm -hmm. appointment. Because mm -hmm. it's very difficult for both Wave and People's Express to turn on a dime and pick someone up with little notice. Mm -hmm. So the more notice they can give, especially if they have an appointment, they might as well book their ride in advance. Yeah. One I of think the, that, the I challenges- think that, um, For both of them, you have to do it three days in advance. So they're mostly open to that. I've never had an issue with that because I'm helping a lot of seniors. But at the same time, when you're in a far rural area, it's more difficult to get in to be able to be able to access those services. But we're still considered Washtenaw County. Mm -hmm. I think I think we're good about a lot of things, doing a lot of things ourselves. But transportation is not our strong suit. <laughs> we'll talk, Juliet. Okay, thank you. One of the the issues that isn't always relevant to all older adults, but the non-emergency medical transportation benefit from Medicaid, that's a re required benefit that Medicaid has to pay for rides to medical appointments, you know, is really a, a system that fails a lot. So what, what we have heard from the healthcare providers is that, you know, this individual was, you know, had a ride set up through the the um, the vendors that Medicaid is using, and th the day of they cancel. So, like you may be hearing from, you know, at Wave or People's Express, you may be hearing from people who had a ride um, that they was supposed to be arranged for them, and because that that system often isn't working well, um, their last minute their rides are canceling. Uh, Margie. So um, when we think about Phoenix and when the system is um, fully operational, is it for older adults, those who are disabled, anybody or just older adults? The Phoenix mod, like current, the current model they have in in Washoe County is for older adults, but their transportation assistance hub model, like so that expanded model, is for all ages. Anybody. They're prior. They do prioritize, like um, you know, older adults and adults with disabilities. So their, you know, their goal is to serve those vulnerable populations, you know, first and as best as possible. But they're not limited in their, um, in who they can serve. And do they include um, uh, transportation for for? those caring for a disabled person or an older adult? A caregiver, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Good. Thank you. Um, let's see. Brenda, did you have your hand up? I don't see it now, but... Yeah, I did have a question. Uh, is there a way that we can get a list of, um, of all the uh, transportation providers in Washington County? I sitting here talking with you all, I realize there's five that I had never heard of. Let's Phoenix, People Express, Wave, and A Ride. And I'm like, wow, I never know those services or knew those services existed. What else, what other providers are there? Yeah, that's it. Um that's a tricky question because there are multiple resources where you could go, you know, like there's 
AAA one B has um, has a, a resource directory. There is two one one, and there's ahead of the curve. You know, all of these are resource directories. Um, even um, Turner Senior Center usually keeps a resource directory. The, mm -hmm. the problem is that that's that you know that's too many. There is no one resource, and I can't tell you for a fact if they're all updated. You know, and that they're all accurate. That that's a problem. I should mention, Brenda, that Let's is in Livingston County, not Washington. Right, right. Um, Annie, before you had to jump off, I, th I thought your hand was up. I don't know if you have a question. Yeah, sorry, everyone. I got kicked off um, from my laptop because I have unstable Wi-Fi connection. So I'm on my phone now. Um, I was just, I can save this for later, but I guess I know ARPA got brought up. Um, the, the Board of Commissioners will get an update soon from staff on any remaining dollars that we need to consider um, allocating towards one-time funding. And we also, later I'll have an update for you on on folks who are with the RFP that um, decisions have been made about allocations that there's still gonna be money left over for the senior. Um, ARPA dollars that were set aside. So the Board of Commissioners will also have to figure out how to spend the remaining dollars. Um, so I can bring that up later, but I know it was brought up in this conversation. I just wanted to chime in. Thanks. So we'll cover that under report from the Board of Commissioners. Julia, did you have another question? Your hand is still up. Oh, you're still on mute. So um, I just wanted to do a little kudos to one of the transportation. A ride um, allows a family member or caregiver to ride with an individual requesting a ride for free. And a lot of caregivers are family members. Sometimes it's older husbands or wives or are their adult children that are living with them to provide care. And it's just really helpful to be able to have those people transported with their loved ones when they're um, completing tasks. Like if they're going in a grocery store, they'll need someone to help them push the cart. Or if they're going to the doctor, sometimes they want someone to ride with them or someone to be assisting them through the process. So I think that um, if there's a, a way to add that pert to all of the mm -hmm. um, transportation, that would be <laughs> wonderful because yeah. um, it is Actually, cost- Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's actually a requirement that all the caregiver or an aide, if if that's required, then that person rides along at no cost. Um, okay. If they need help with the errands that they're going on, if they, you know, medically are supposed to have someone travel with them, if they have a caregiver or an aide, that person is always supposed to be riding for free. And so, if anyone tries to charge you, um, wow. Don't. Okay. It's good to know. Yeah, it's good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now I know. <laughs> Thank you. Who sets that requirement, Marie? I think it's MDOT, but it could be a federal thing. Yeah, I think it's federal passed along through MDOT. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, one, I'm not trying to jinx it, Marie, but so the particular instance I'm talking about, there is a caregiver that needed to go with an uh, um, uh, older individual, but they also wanted their wife to come. So that would be two people. Is that um, Correct. Acceptable? The, the, dry, the caregiver would ride for free, mm -hmm. but the wife would probably still have to pay some yeah, agencies may it. still give a discount for that or mm -hmm. let it be free but that one's not um protected the way that a caregiver aid is okay thank you yeah are there any more questions or comments All right, well, thank you for inviting me to present and- Is there anything, um, I just wonder, is there anything that either the Commission on Aging can do as a group 
um, at this point or as individuals, um, is there anything that we should be or could be doing to move this further? Well, yeah, I think the one thing to pay attention to are those, um, like if you read the report, the the recommendations, which go into a little more detail than what I did, because even um, the solution that Phoenix, you know, can um, implement is, is not the end all be all solution. I mean, there's still, you know, like Marie talked about, uh, looking at um, different options for, you know, the, uh, the official authority, you know, you know, can the, um, the current authority be expanded? Can there be a second authority? You know, these would all be important um, conversations, you know, that could lead to additional funding. Uh, just the, you know, just having somebody who can really analyze the funding that's coming into the community and understand is it is it coming you know in an equitable manner is it um is it being used in in a way that uh, meets the needs so there are a number of other solutions that are needed and and so you know having you know a, a champion as i said that can take the lead and can you know, say that it's a priority for us to to have um, an equitable transportation system for seniors. You know, that's something that I still think is needed, and is something that all of you can be advocating. You know, whether that's advocating to you know the county to take responsibility for that, or whether it's advocating for um, like city governments or other entities. I think it's a good idea for each of us to be in uh, contact with our county commissioner as well and make sure they understand this issue as thoroughly as possible. And this information will go into our annual report as well and will be part of a presentation to the board of commissioners at the end of the year. <laughs> There's some noise in the background. I'm not sure where that's Okay, that takes care of that. Okay, if anybody, last call for anyone who has anything that they want to uh, bring up in this sub subject area. Okay, thank you very much, Dina, for your presentation and for starting such an interesting conversation. Yeah, and thank you for all the questions. This I won't be the it. last time we discuss transportation. I'm very certain about that. Yes. Um, so at this point on the agenda, we have a five minute break scheduled. And I see right now it's eight minutes after 10. So at 13 after 10, we will resume the meeting. And this gives everybody a chance to stand up, take care of personal needs, stretch their legs, et cetera. So we'll be back at um, 10.13.
Okay, it's uh, actually 1014, so we'll uh, go back into session. Looks like we have a quorum present, so that's good. Didn't lose any, any uh, substantial number of individuals anyway. Um, the next thing on our agenda is subcommittee updates, and we'll start with communications. Um, it sounds like um, people are interested in um, the discussion we had about um, communicating this information we had about transportation from every commissioner today. It sounds like this is an issue in their particular area. So I was wondering if folks thought it would be a good idea for the communications committee to um, just meet and pull together based on this presentation and the full report, a few talking points that you could then share with your county commissioners. I see a lot of yeses, so that sounds like we have a task. I am going to ask those of you on the um, communications committee to um, email me with some possible times um, that you might uh, be available to meet via Zoom call. And I'm guessing this is something we could probably hammer out pretty quickly talking about it with Zoom call, sharing a draft, and then getting it out to people. So if you have time after uh, the 5th that you could meet in the next couple of weeks and let me drop, oh, we don't have chat because we're a webinar. So um, who's on the currently on the communications committee? We have Jennifer, I thought Janet, was um and then that might be something jasmine you might be interested in at least uh dipping your toe in to get to know things so i i put you on the spot but i see you uh saying yes so taylor maybe you could shoot jennifer janet jasmine and me an email and then i'll follow up with setting up a time for us to meet and come up with talking points. Actually, um, I think that we don't have a Janet, but there are two Jennifers and they're both on the communications committee. I'm sorry. I don't know why I wanted to make one person Janet. I think because we have two Jennifers. Thank <laughs> you. So we'll I apologize. To... I guess I should apologize to both Jennifers then for thinking, for referring to one of you as a Janet. <laughs> They can both um, uh, assume that you are talking about the other one. Um, yes. <laughs> we'll need, we'll need to reach out to Jennifer Green because she's not present today. Um, yeah. And I did tell Jasmine when we met before this meeting that she needs to think about the subcommittees and decide which one, one or more that she wishes to volunteer be part of. So we'll let her reach out to the spokesperson for those subcommittees or I'll check back with her also. Um, anything else for communications, Elizabeth? No, I think that's it. I see Jennifer Heckendorn, you have your hand up. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that I sent out the Senior Living Week flyer to all of the email um, addresses that we collected at our senior town hall. So I think that qualifies under uh, communication. Yes. <laughs> Great. And do we have the, uh, that list in more than one location um, in case you have a computer failure, Jennifer? Um, I do not have it. I have only one uh, copy and a paper copy, but I'll send, I can send the um, list to Taylor if that would be helpful. Yes, very much so. What, what did you Please. send out again? Um, the senior living week flyer that you sent out to us. Thank you. That way, if we if another uh, if we need to send communications to that group of people that were at the that's a, this is a town hall list. Is that correct? 
Yeah, then we can uh, have a way, a central way, and, and, and in case you're not available, if something needs to go out, so that will be perfect. Jennifer, did you did you send that list to me? Um, no, I haven't sent that to you yet, Brenda, but I will, and I'll send a, a copy to Taylor, so if anybody else would like to have access to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just as a comment, um, the speaker at that um, uh, program, I can't remember her name right now, but she's really quite a... Uh, um, uh, a noted person around um, issues of older adults. I think it was um, difficult to get her, um, but I, I, just knowing her background, um, it would be worth a visit. Take are you her, speaking about the, um, Elizabeth or Margaret? Are you speaking about the town hall or about the uh, event that Jennifer was just referring to? The event, the event that Jennifer. Uh, was speaking of the senior program in the fall. Okay, perfect. Anything else from communications? Okay, let's talk about ARPA. Okay, um, we have not met. Um, we're kind of um, in the dark about uh, the ARPA funds and it's so my understanding proposals were due the end of um, July, and I did not see in the minutes or the agendas of the Board of Commissioners that they were discussed. So I'm kind of waiting for Annie to give her report. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get catch up that under the report from the Board of Commissioners, but um, one of the things I would like to open for discussion and maybe have the ARPA subcommittee discuss is whether this is still a viable subcommittee or whether it should be continued. So I'll leave well, that to you as a committee to discuss. That's a good idea, Marta. Um, yeah. So if, if you don't meet for any other reason, that might be a good reason to meet and talk. Pardon? I said, if you aren't, don't have any other reason to meet, that might be a good reason to have a, have a meeting to discuss that possibility. Yes, yes. good idea. Mm-hmm. We'll do it. Thank you. Uh, next one is the potential millage subcommittee. We uh, did not have a formal meeting for potential millage or for um, the future planning. Um, the last piece of information we have on the potential millage is that the um, County is considering a general millage that they would potentially allocate some dollars towards seniors. Um, and I see Phyllis has her hand up, uh, and then Annie's just went up too. Um, I I apologize for the background noise. They're cutting the grass. Um, Phyllis, you're breaking up. I wonder if you want to turn off your video and see if you have better. I'm wondering uh, whether, okay, let's see if this is any better. Um, I wonder if uh, when you talk to your commissioners about the transportation, you can also ask them their uh questions about the millage so that uh, we can find out what is needed to um, uh, to put this on the ballot. Um, there's there is a need for um, uh, sustainable funding for the very it, at this point there is not a uh, county office of aging and so if we could find out from the commissioners what their feelings and questions are uh, that would be very helpful to know uh, 
forward. Uh, there's there are people who want to uh, try to have a separate millage um, the uh, November 24 ballot um, even if it is uh, done through a um, potential the commissioners, if the commission, the, the board of commissioners support this effort. So a lot of effort out there, and I think we as an organization, the Commission on Aging, uh, can be very helpful if we can help sort through what are the questions, what are what are the um, the answers going forward, uh, maybe through the um, uh, study that Chris Lemon talked about, we will find out some of the answers. However, if you are going to talk to your commissioners anyway, um, I would encourage you to try to get some background information from them. I, that would be very helpful. So we'll all proceed to collect information as we talk to our commissioners. Annie, you had something also? Yeah, I just wanted to react. The commissioners are not considering a general millage. I think that comment was made by somebody who is not a commissioner. Um, I think what the commissioners have been asking for is more information about exactly how the millage would be spent. And I know that some folks are waiting for the mapping. I think the research that the Ann Arbor Community Foundation is doing will help with that. But in terms of like what I've told the say yes to seniors folks is that like I support this, but I also need to be able to like sell this to people. And I don't know what to tell people. I know that we need it. We need to spend more on older adult services, but how exactly is, would a millage change the way that we support older adults? And I, I think um, Commissioner Labar mentioned that in one of our last board meetings during Commissioner follow-up to public comment. So I think just more information is needed um, both for the commissioners to be able to explain why we would put this on the ballot, but also just so like the organizers behind the millage can get, you know, be successful. Um, I come from like an organizing and campaigns and elections background and more like when it comes to asking voters to do this, um, I think you just have to be able to answer um, more questions than you would ever anticipate. So having more information is just better for all of us. Um, but I, I mean, I think that like, yeah, I from what I can tell, I think more information. That's at least what Commissioner Barr uh, Labar vocalized at our last meeting. Okay. Uh, so which which Gina has her hand up, and then Brenda. That's that's the question. I don't know who is speaking. I think that's Phyllis. Oh. I think Phyllis she's having connection issues. There's Phyllis. Were you done, Phyllis? I, I'm sorry. It's hard to understand her, Margo. Oh, I just, yeah. Phyllis, you are muted. Right. My, Phyllis, can you I, turn, can I, you turn I, your, yeah. yeah. Does that work better if I... Okay. Anyway, I apologize for just blurting out before. And so I muted myself and just hid. But um, I, if I, I am at a loss to know what specific information the commissioners need, um, it, 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 is it a matter of how many dollars for different services? Is it a matter of which services or which agencies need money? I, I, so I understand that they want specifics, but I'm wondering what kind of specifics. I, that would be very helpful for me. And I think for the Say Yes to Seniors Collaborative that uh, has been working for 
I don't know, five or more years on this topic. I think we're still in the information gathering phase. There's no question about that. Um, Dina and then Brenda. I just had a qu clarification question for Annie. I, I don't know if I heard this right, but um, so Administrator Greg Dill had shared in a meeting, I think it was over the summer, that he was um, interested in advocating for a, a general operating millage and that um, dollars allocated from for senior services would come out of that. Uh, did you say that that is no longer in consideration? So, no. So, I, county and our county administrator may have said that I wasn't there. Um, that's what it sounds like based on what folks have told me. I'm saying that the board of commissioners, to my knowledge, I haven't talked I've heard maybe one board of commissioner say that. I, I don't really, I so I just don't think that that's like even really a conversation that's ha been had among the majority of the board. So I just don't, I don't want that to get like in the mix of all of this and kind of create additional confusion or chaos around this millage. Um, and I guess like the point that I'm trying to make without being like disrespectful to county admin who like, like the board of commissioners are the only people who get to make that decision. And so like, I just wanted to kind of squash that because it's not really like happening. Like I, at least not in conversations that I'm having with other commissioners. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Brenda? Yes, um, the concern I have is not about the millage, but it's how everyone is so quick to say, pass a millage. And without, I would like to know if that happens, how is that money going to be used for older adults? Agencies that will get the funding, how is it going to uh, help the older adults? And right now we need to carefully consider the, the pressure that is gonna be put on older adults to pay that additional millage. So I just think everyone just needs to really, you know, think about it because there are some older adults who cannot pay additional taxes. And um, I just think we really need to be careful and, and make sure that the funding goes toward older adults. And, and I understand that a lot of the services that are pr provided are from uh, nonprofits, but we just need to make sure that those nonprofits are providing the services that we really need throughout Washtenaw County, the entire county. That's it. Thank you, Brenda. Anything else on potential millage or moving forward since Marie collapsed them both into one category here? Uh, I think they're kind of related anyway, pretty closely related. Um, I think the only other comment I had for future planning is that the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation does have their uh, consultants, which which um, Chris shared at our last meeting, they've been having a lot of uh, sessions with uh, community agencies, county officials, et cetera. I was able to go to one of those meetings, and I'm very excited to hear about um, their progress when they're ready to share that. Excellent. Okay, the next subject is the safety town hall. Brenda, do you want to talk any more about that or talk about future plans? Um, Yes, I have made contact with uh, Gary Muntz in Chelsea, and he's going to uh, get the senior center there for our next town hall. The June date, um, like we had it last year, will stand. Um, the only concern he had is that we need to wait till after school is out. And I think he said that the school uses the community center for something, but he did say after um, school was out to use the senior center. Um, so we're all set with a time and a place and it will be around like one o'clock like we had last time from one to three. So what we need to do is start putting our thinking caps on and figure out what topics and concerns and issues 
that uh, we need to discuss for the older adults. And he's excited about us coming to the western part of the county. That's it. I see Juliet has a uh, an audio visual aid here, a visual aid, I guess it is. Um, um, Phyllis, you're muted. All right. Oh, all right. So I turned the uh, the camera off, but so this flyer that I have, you won't be able to see. But recently, I went to see a, uh, a theatrical presentation called Solo Acts. Um, it, it's about solo aging. And it's so hard to understand this it. Is, um, Phyllis, so I'm amazing. sorry. Phyllis, I'm sorry. We can't, we can't okay. hear her. Okay. Phyllis. All right. I'm sorry um, to say that um, you're breaking. Phyllis, I'm sorry to say, I, I, we can't. Phyllis, I'm sorry to say that you're breaking up so badly that we can't understand what you're saying. So we're going to have to come back to you later. Okay. So okay. Um, I'll check back with you a little bit later in the meeting and see if we can get a better um, video audio for you. Um. Okay. Anything else on town hall, Brenda? No, that's it. Cool. Next on the item on the agenda is a report from the Board of Commissioners. Uh, I'll let Annie take it away. All right, thanks. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, um, yes, okay, awesome. I'm just, I'm still on my phone so I can't see anyone besides Marta. Um, so the update from the board is that in our next board packet, you will see a recommendation um, for awards from the RFP. Um, that's, and, I believe I'm. I don't have. We haven't gotten the board packet yet. So if that changes, um, I will. I'll email you, Marta, um, just directly. Um, and so that will be in the board packet that goes out. Hopefully, it's supposed to. Um, that's for our board meeting next Wednesday. Um, so I think, to my knowledge, everybody who applied was awarded something. Um, there were about nine organizations. Um, I can't ramble all of them off off the top of my head. Um, we weren't given, like, the commissioners haven't been just given digital copies. The only reason why I know is because I'm in board leadership. So we get the preview ahead of the next meeting. Um, and there will be some dollars remaining. So the board of commissioners will have to re make take action to spend the remaining dollars and figure out a way to do that in a process. So that will leave some time um, for folks to you know, think about what they would like to see and reach out to your commissioner and, and make recommendations or, um, you know, a pass resolution here encouraging them to do something that you think um, is reasonable with the remainder of the dollars. The um, RFP for the senior mapping is going to go out in October. Um, there's a draft RFP right now that I haven't seen, but that staff is working on and it will be open for a month. So that stuff is is in the queue and it is happening um and those are my updates okay i see elizabeth has her hand up okay um, i was wondering annie um since um there was some mention about um possible arpa funding that in our discussion about transportation to help phoenix mobility continue you would is that the kind of recommendation that um, would be appropriate to forward to the board of commissioners? Should this group think that that's a good idea? Um, and if so, what is the time frame? Because that was one of our complications last time was understanding what the time frame was. I mean, are they going to ask for? another round of RFPs? Are they going to look at a sole source allocation? And if the decision hasn't been made yet, how would we get to know the decision in a time enough to be able to share with, for example, the Healthy Aging Collaborative or other groups that might have a recommendation? 
or even ourselves. Yeah, so as you know, everything moves very slow at the county, so there will be plenty of time. Um, we're expected to get an update from staff broadly on all of the ARPA dollars remaining. Um, dollars have to be um, allocated by the end of next year of 24. Um, so we have lots of time at this point. Um, and I think that once we know how much is remaining from was already set aside for senior um to spend on older adult services um that will give you a better idea of like what might make sense to make to encourage or recommend to the board um and i will certainly at you know once we have this conversation um if there are things relevant to what other commissioners are thinking um in terms of this bucket in particular i will share that in my updates at the if it comes before the next um commission on aging meeting but um, I, and then to your point about the transportation, sure, like anything's a good idea to recommend if you, if the group, you know, passes a resolution and everybody's in agreement. Um, I think what becomes challenging is if different members of the Commission on Aging are reaching out independently and making different suggestions. So what I would recommend is that, um, you know, you, it is something in the form of a resolution. So that way um, people are on the same page. To allow us to do that, we will need timely notification of the amount of dollars, which obviously helps condition the kinds of recommendations mm -hmm. that get made, and the time frame for making that recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, not to revisit the past too much, but we had given formal input early on and then had no ability to have any input in the process up to date. Yeah. So uh, it would be very good if we could have notification of what the time frame is and the amount in a time that would allow us as a body to make a recommendation. Because your point is very well made, uh, a, something that comes from us needs to be from all of us. Otherwise, it's it's not a recommendation from us. So. Yeah, so I will, as soon as I know, as soon as we are informed and given um, detailed information about what's remaining, I will let the board know. Um, but, but, yeah, I, I don't know when that's going to happen. So um, I will make sure to do that. Thank you. And this mm -hmm. sounds like another topic for the uh, ARPA subcommittee to take up. So now you have two things on your list, Margie. One one recommendation I would just make, um, I, you know, a good way to get in, information, like I can pass information in my commission update as a liaison to this body, but um, attending our meetings and giving public comment, um, especially when we have items up relevant to this is also a good way, even if like, say you pass a resolution, it's forwarded to the board as a communication, and then two months down the road, you see the board taking action and it's not maybe not necessarily what this body recommended. Um, public participation is always a way to voice those and sometimes that will lead to the board tabling something so that we can reconsider. And so just like participating in the democratic process I would just encourage um, more of, especially when items relevant to this group are on the agenda. Okay. Suggestion, um, Dina and then Margaret. Annie, are you saying that of the, so I think it was 3.8 million that was set aside for um, the ARPA funding for seniors, you're saying that they're out of that bucket, there's going to be some money left? Yes, there will be some money left out of that bucket. So do you know that did if everyone that applied is getting funding, did they did they get their full ask and they just that didn't add up to three point eight million? I, I think that's what happened. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to ask. Um, oh, am I next? Yes, you are. OK. Um, have have we ever done a um, county 
fund mapping project before any as do you, to your knowledge has that ever been done and mm -hmm. is there any estimate of how long that takes because that might feed into our communication about millage at some point i have no idea actually I don't think they do. okay. okay i mean i'm sure like Government agencies have to do things like that. And I'm sure that's been done on some level. Like I know that there was like a housing report done like 20 years ago. I'm sure they use some sort of consulting service to help with that. So I would imagine so, but I actually don't know. Um, I'm too new to like have that institutional knowledge on. Okay. And other mapping that's been done. And um, did you say that RFP was going to be available in September or October? The RFP is scheduled to be published in October. There's a draft RFP right now that administration's working on, and then it'll be open for a month. Okay, thank you. Brenda. Yeah, um, my question is this, Annie. We keep saying the, the ARPA funding for seniors. How will, we, how, how will we know for sure that it is going towards seniors? How are we going to monitor that? Yeah, so the board, before I was a board member, set aside a specific amount of money for older adult services. That's the $3.8 million. Right. Um, some of that money, like about 200000 was set aside for the senior mapping. So the mapping that we've been talking about for the, like to pay somebody to do that for us. Um, and then the rest, um, part of that, like a little over $2 million, I believe, is what folks applied for with the RFP that went out so I don't have the exact number though so I can't give you an amount of what's left but that money whatever's left is specifically to be spent on senior services just like the RFP that we put out was specific to senior services so for example I can tell you that Ipsy Meals on Wheels and Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels were awarded some dollars okay. um and then so yeah that's how because it's already okay. been decided and there's it can't go outside of that Okay. So, and, and even like there's just checks and balances, for example, like even though the commissioners already did this last year saying that this 3.8 is specific to this, we still have to approve the awards again. Like there's mm -hmm. always like a next level of approval by the board because maybe the commissioners don't like the organizations that were awarded or maybe there's an organization that we don't think actually provides senior services. That's mm -hmm. where we come in and, and have the accountability. Um, okay. So I can't, like, I can tell you from the list, I saw everyone is uh, an older adult service provider, um, but like it could happen where like randomly some organization that doesn't actually provide those services gets a, like a recommendation by staff and then that would be the commissioner's responsibility to, you know, say, uh, can you explain this a little more? We don't think this is right and we would like mm -hmm. to remove this from this recommendation. And, and not have those dollars given to that organization. So there's a lot of levels of approval by the board. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions for Annie? I should mention that we still have two open seats on the Commission on Aging, one representing District 8, which I believe is Commissioner Robbie's district and one at large. I have been um, shaking the trees and all of my contact networks mm -hmm. and seeing who I can shake out, but I hopefully everybody else is also um, reaching out to people that they know that might be good voices for seniors in the county and might enhance the diversity of our ability to understand the issues. Um, so we'll leave that there, but I encourage everyone to continue uh, encouraging people um, to apply. Um, under report from the chair, um, I think it's important to note that by the bylaws, no one is allowed to remain an officer for more than two years, uh, two consecutive terms, which is one year each time. Uh, we do have election of officers coming up in January, and the only officer at this moment that is going to time out on their two years is me. So um, I still be a member of the Commission on Aging, but my term as chair will come to the end at the end of December and someone else will need to take over as chair. So um, both Brenda and Elizabeth are in the first year of their two years uh, available as officers. 
So they're both eligible to retain their offices for another year if they choose to ask to be reappointed to those uh, positions. So I would encourage everyone on the Commission on Aging to consider whether or not they would be interested in uh, putting their name forward to serve as chair starting in January. And you can feel free to check with me to see what I perceive to be the duties of the chair, not to say that that would be a dictatorship of what they would the next chair would do, but I think it's important to know what I've been doing, um, much of which takes place behind the scenes uh, so that you all can be informed. Um, Brenda, I see you have your hand up or, or is that a inadvertent? No, I have my hands up. Um, I just wanna say that um, I learned a lot from you since the short time that I've been on this board. And um, I also wanna know who, set the requirements for two years for a chair. Was that the county commissioners? That's in the bylaws that were proposed by the Commission on Aging and adopted by the county commissioners. Okay, so we put that in the bylaws, this commission. That was in the bylaws, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, other things I have on my list, um, I did hear from Ashley um, that she is batching our, um, you know, we each get a small stipend for participating on the Commission on Aging, and she is batching those rather than doing it one every month. So mm -hmm. you know, if anyone has not received their compensation, they might want to check with Ashley to, you know, see what happened there. But you will be receiving, I believe, at least quarterly or maybe every six months rather than once a month. Um, and I think that's a good idea for paper flow reasons. Um, I am available to speak to the senior center directors again about the work of the Commission on Aging or to any senior center that would like to invite me. So I'll put that out there as an um, opportunity. Um, one of the possible future presentations we have on the list um, is something about uh, advanced directives, end of life planning, steps of what to do when your spouse pa passes, those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that would be something that you would like to have us place on the list for future. Definitely, um, yes, I would. I see several heads nodding. So we'll put that on the list under presentations that we may hear at future meetings and the officers will work on that. Um, I think that's all I wanted to say under report from the chair. Elizabeth, I see that you have your hand up. Yeah. Um, it seems like we have an opportunity, as you always do, when officers' terms end. And there may indeed be somebody in our commission now who is uh, willing and able and excited about the idea of being chair next year, which would be wonderful. But I have served on many a body in my time where sometimes um, the continuity of a chair can be really helpful too, you know. So I was wondering if we thought it might be an idea to give us the maximum flexibility to consider amending our bylaws because we have short terms, we only have a year term to allow somebody to continue to serve maybe one extra term as an officer and that way, um, and it, it would have to go to the county commission to accept the amendment to our bylaws but that might give us the flexibility in case nobody steps forward and saying, yeah, I wanna be chair, that we could um, twist Marta's arm to serve one more term. Just an idea that to, I'm tossing out for discussion for folks to say that's a good idea or Elizabeth, that's a really bad idea, no. Elizabeth, that's a great idea. Elizabeth, that's a great idea. If Marta is willing. I'll engage in this discussion. Um, from a, a board perspective, it's good to have change in leadership, um, but a clarification that our bylaws say someone, for any of our officers, you can do it two years consecutively. They can take a break. They can be a different officer and then they can come back to that position. Um, so if 
if, you know, thinking about the continuity that you were mentioning, Elizabeth, mm -hmm. um, it could make sense that we adopt a practice, not necessarily a bylaw thing, but we adopt a practice that maybe the chair becomes the vice chair or vice versa. So we have some of that continuity built into how we typically oh, do yeah. leadership transition, but we protect that two year thing to allow for leadership to have a break. <laughs> um, that's healthy. And then also to have a, a switch in leadership, it can be help, healthy for the body as well. That's a great idea, and I've never heard of that before, but it makes tons of sense to me, and that basically is something that doesn't require a bylaw amendment, from what I'm hearing you say. It could just be something we decide in January when we're looking at who's going to be officers. And I will say, uh, for the record, that if we do have an officer change in January, I'm very willing to sit with that person and assist them for as much help as they need, should we have a new chair. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> okay, so I think we've pretty much handled that discussion. Um, we don't have any new business, so the next thing up is our next meeting, um, which is October 6th. Um, at that time, we'll be hearing a report on housing, long-term care, and evictions, that kind of general category that we'll be talking about. Um, uh, and I haven't seen the draft presentation yet, but I'm sure that's coming up. Who's going to be the speaker, Marta? For I'm, not the... sure that's, I'm not sure that's been clarified yet. And when is the officers meeting? I'm checking. You know, Thursday Brenda, the 21st. September, September Thursday 20th. the... What Marta was saying. The officers meeting is September 21st at 8 a.m. Brenda, I think we need to get you a calendar of meetings so that... Oh, I have it. Okay. I got it somewhere, you guys. I got to look for it in my emails. I was once the um, business manager for a national organization and the chair had this habit of contacting me with every small little question. And um, one day he called up and said, can you tell me who is the, can you give me the contact information for, and he named the person he was trying to reach. And I said, Jack, you got the membership directory there on your desk? And he goes, yeah. And I said, I think you're going to find it's on page 21. And he looked at me and said, so just like that, you're going to kick me out of the nest. And I said, yes, I'm kick you out of the nest. Uh, you're going to kick me out. Okay. Yep. You're on your way out of the nest, Brenda. I just get so many emails from Taylor and Marie and you and Elizabeth. We'll try to try to manage that a little bit better. Does anybody else have anything else we need to take up? We have three more minutes to go. I don't think, I think we pretty much cover. Oh, um, Phyllis, you were, did I'll, you finish I'll, making I'll point? try again. Any, so um, there's this, or is the sound okay? Better. Otherwise, it's better, but this, it's not. An idea for the town hall, um, and it has to do with people aging um, as, as an individual, either a widow or just being alone, and all the uh, so it's a it's a theatrical presentation that leads to a discussion, and um, it's a it's a thought. Um, so I can pass on information uh, about That's that good. through Becky Alexander at Eastern Michigan. Yeah, I think if you pass that information along to Brenda, she's. I saw the I saw the um, presentation a week or so. I think if you pass that information along to Brenda, she's okay. collecting ideas. Um, thank you for suggesting right. that. In okay. the mean, in the meantime, sure. Let's all the commissioners. Let's come up with our 
friends and the organizations that we know who want to have resource information available like we did last time. So okay. let's do that. In the meantime, we have a, almost a year. As soon as we have a date, we can reach out. We, we need a date. Right, I will get that from Gary uh, for the next meeting. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's it. So what we need now is a motion to adjourn. Well, first of all, happy Labor Day, everyone. I'll make that motion. And we have a support for that. Support. support. Elizabeth supported. So Marie moved and Elizabeth supported. Um, and we do not need to take a roll call vote. So at this point, everybody who agrees with adjourning, put your thumbs up or shake your head up and down. And it looks like we have an agreement. And so this meeting is adjourned and we'll see you all next month. Good meeting, everyone. Have a nice Labor Day. Bye-bye.